first of all. I'm 5'2", have been for over a decade now. This video is just exposing me for what I truly am, which is very short. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're hanging out by my bookshelves because I want to do a trash my TBR video. Basically, this is just exposing my TBR for criticism. Should I read the book? Should I not read the book? And then it's also exposing how many books I have on my physical TBR. Uh, and then we're also going to look at my bookshelves. This video is obviously going to have to take place in parts. I have three bookshelves, two of these tall ones, and then a little guy. This is years and years and years of collecting books. I am an English major, so I have a lot of books from university. I work at a bookstore, so I get a sweet discount on books. I have a lot of books. So I am going to go through all of my books, tell you which ones are on my TBR. If I can remember what they're about, we'll talk about that. And then obviously you'll also get to see which books I've read. So it starts with like my literary fiction. I also try to keep all of my indigenous authors together, poetry, and then I have some more classics and then it goes into nonfiction. First few books are TBR books too. The first one I have is Our Story from a variety of authors. And these, I believe, are nonfiction essays by Indigenous writers about Canada, I think. Let me check the copyright page. Short stories. It's short stories by Indigenous authors. Then I have Motorcycles and Sweetgrass by Drew Hayden Taylor, who is also an Indigenous author. He is Anishinaabe, I believe. Yeah, Anishinaabe on Curve Lake First Nation. And this is about... I don't know what it's about, okay? I don't know what this one's about either. It's There There by Tommy Orange. Oh God, this is so embarrassing. Oh, I do know what this one's about. It's a bunch of people all traveling to a indigenous reserve for a powwow. And it was a Globe and Mail and New York Times best book, so... That I haven't read yet, obviously. I also have Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh, another Indigenous author. She's Cree, I believe. And it takes place in BC in Alberta. I don't know what it's about. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Okay, I have The Marrow Thieves. I have read this. One of my favorite books. Very fantastic. And then another Sherry Dimaline book, Empire of Wild, which is based on the story of the Roguru of the Métis culture. And I think it's like a werewolf-like creature. I have The Break by Katharina Vermet. I read this in university and it's still one of my favorite books. I also have Moon of the Crested Snow by Wabashik Rice. This is like a dystopian thriller-esque. Then I have Beyond Space and Time, Love Beyond Space and Time, edited by Hope Nicholson. This is a collection of sci-fi, indigenous, LGBTQ short stories. Um, and it's really, as you can see, I've read the heck out of it. Now the Thomas King books I own, I have The Back of the Turtle. I have an advanced copy of Indians on Vacation. And I have Green Grass Running Water. Green Grass Running Water I've read, as you can see. Uh, highly recommend. So good. Indians on Vacation is like supposed to be very quintessential Thomas King. It's about indigenous folks. Um, like on vacation, <laughs> I think. It's supposed to be funny. Uh, and then I also have Back of the Turtle, which has been rec recommended to me like crazy. I don't know what this one's about either, but um, I love Green Grass Running Water, so I have some more Thomas King that I've never read. And I have uh, Tales from Feroja Bog by Rohinton Mystery. Um, and this is a collection of short stories that all take place in the same like housing complex in Bombay and it's just about like life there and all the characters between the short stories kind of intertwine as well. It's really good. I read this in university. Then I have my Eden Robinson collection. So I have Monkey Beach, which I've read and loved. I have Son of a Trickster, which I've also read and loved. And then I have the sequel to Son of a Trickster, Trickster Drift, which I may or may not be reading soon. And then I have um, Split Tooth by Tanya Tagok, which I have read 
and it's very weird but I loved it anyways. The rest of the shelf I have not read so let's go over it. I have How to Build a Girl by Caitlin Morin. This I believe is about um, like a girl who's like up and coming famous. Um, I think she's like in a girl group or I don't know but it takes place in like the 90s and it's like music famous scene. Then I have Allie Smith, How to Be Both. Um, this is a book that follows two women in two different time periods, I believe. Oh my god, I was right. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Yeah, two women in two different time periods and like their slice of life. But also depending on what copy you get, one woman's story is first and the other one is second, or it could be the other way around. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting and I've heard that that really influences how you read each story. I've had this on my TBR literally for years, like probably since 2016. The next book is one that I've started but I have not finished. It's called Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Thien. I've read some of her short works for university. It's basically about a family that it goes like back and forth between a bunch of narratives, but it's like family in China, family in Vancouver, like immigration, cultural differences, all that kind of stuff. It's literary fiction and it's really long, so it's quite heavy to read. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Apparently it's good. I haven't read it. And then I have Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rao. This, I have no idea what this is about. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this. Seeing electrifying debut novel set in Indian America. Okay, I thought that. The bond between two girls driven apart by circumstances, but relentless in their search for each other. I've had this book since it came out, and I still have not read it, so you can shame me. This is a recent addition to my shelves. Technically, I don't think it should be here. I think it should be with, like, my SFF stuff. Uh, but this is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. This is about a woman who comes across the statue and she's never seen it before and she really likes it so she posts about it on social media and like gives him a name I think there's a rainbow outside and then wakes up the next day to find out that her picture has gone viral and all of these statues have popped up around the world because she's given it the same I think it's like Clive or something now everyone is calling these statues Clive is that what it's about Carl's. That's it. Carl. So yeah, I haven't read this, but I've heard really fantastic things about it, so I'm looking forward to reading that. So that's my top shelf. Most of it's TBR, and the next shelf is also mostly TBR. So I have a couple copies of Peter Pan here, and I have Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Fanu. This I've read and loved. I have my favorite book of all time next to it which is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I have one of Roger Har Hargrave's Mr. Birthday books that my friend gave to me for my birthday one year. So I have that sitting here. Then I have a few more books that I read in university. I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. It took me a second there. Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, which is a really fantastic play. I highly recommend if you like reading plays. And then I also have The Bell Jar by Sylvie Sylvia Plath. Now we're getting into stuff that I haven't read. <laughs> I have an advanced copy of the Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I have The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is like a Jack the Ripper vampire book and it's super long and I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to reading this. We shall see. Then I have Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. This is a collection of short stories that talk about um, the like Chinese American uh, immigrant uh, type of life. So that's on my TBR. I haven't read that. I have 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awad. This I have read. Then I have The Secret History by Donna Tart, which I've had for quite some time and I still have not read. So here we are. That's the moral of today. I mean, I don't have to explain what this is about. I feel like everyone knows what that's about. It's like a dark academia literary story. A couple of books by Kim Soy. I have Man and I have V. Man I have read. Um, and I liked it. I read it in university. Um, and then I picked this up because her books are so short and I really liked her first one and I have no idea what it's about. I have a couple of Kim Fu books. I have Today I Am a Boy, which I haven't actually finished. I'm halfway through it. Um, and I really liked it, uh, but it's really heavy. I gotta finish that soon. It's a really good book. And then I also have The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore. 
which is about girls who I think it's like girl guide style they like go and then they get like abandoned and they have to like survive together so that's on my TBR I haven't read that but I have a book another book that I've started and I haven't finished Vampires in the Lemon, Lemon Grove by Karen Russell which I've heard really fantastic things about Karen Russell I've read the first couple stories in this you can see I actually like bookmarked it here she writes like um, like sci-fi fantasy type of short stories. I have Difficult Women by Roxane Gay, which is another collection of short stories that are like feminist women driven stories because Roxane Gay. Believe it or not, I have an arc of Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, um, which came out in May of 2013. So this is quite an old arc. I inherited this from someone. Um, but it is a novel that I do want to read eventually. I wonder how many people are like looking for something like that for their collections. Then I have, again, this is like more of a sci-fi, like literary sci-fi book, but it's The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This is something that I didn't love the first time I read it. And then I wrote an essay about it and I still didn't really like it, but it is one that I would like to reread eventually because of that. Well, actually what had happened was I was in fourth year and it was like, my difficult semester of fourth year and um, I like speed read it so I would like to actually like sit and read this at some point. And I have a couple of Diane Brand books. I have Theory which I've read and I really really enjoyed um, and then I have In Another Place Not Here which is about I mean most of her novels are about um, the uh, Caribbean diaspora, like that experience of living in Canada, being from the Caribbean, not really being from the Caribbean because your ancestors were brought there through the Atlantic, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. So a lot of her books followed that and I think this is similar. So then I have The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. This is half short stories, half essays, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's really good. Now we're into my poetry, which half of it I've read. I have 77 Fragments of a Familiar Ruin by Thomas King. Obviously part of my Thomas King collection. I haven't read it yet. I have Holy Wild by Gwen Benaway, who is an author in the um, Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time collection. And when I found out that she put out a poetry collection, I really wanted to read it. I haven't read it yet. Then I have my Diane Brand poetry, No Language is Neutral, one of my absolutely favorite collections of poetry. It is so fantastic. It's chef's kiss. It's so good. Um, and then I also have Fierce Departures, which is excerpts from some of her longer poetry and a couple of her like shorter poems as well, which I read both of. Then I have my Billy Ray Belcourt collections. I've read This Wound, this wound is a World. I really like it. I haven't read Endy and Coping Mechanisms yet. And then I'm just going to burn through the rest of these. I have River Women by Katharina Vermette. I've read it. I love it. I have Book of My Nights by Lee Young Lee, which I've read and I liked. I read this in university. I have a zine uh, called 300 Hours a Minute Poems About YouTube Videos, uh, which I have read. I have If They Come For Us by Fatima Asgar. I've read it. I loved it. I have Shame is an Ocean I Swim Across by Mary Lambert. I have not read this one yet, but I've heard really, really fantastic things about it. I have Lost Lunar Bedecker by Mina Loy. I've read a couple of the poems for university, but I kept it because eventually I do want to get through the whole thing. Then I have Sea Prayer by Khaled Husini, uh, which is like a short illustrated poem. Uh, and it's really good and I've read it. All right, so this next shelf you can't see super well, but as I mentioned, it has some classics on it and then it's all nonfiction. So we'll go through that. Some of my Word Cloud Classic editions. Um, I have two more. I have Dracula and Frankenstein in these as well, but I actually keep them over on my desk bookshelf. I started reading Dracula and I DNF'd it and obviously Frankenstein is one of my favorite books. So I've read that one. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I have not read on my list. <laughs> I have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I don't know if I'll ever read this. Um, Charles Dickens is hit and miss with me. So I don't know. We'll see about that. I originally actually bought it because Cassandra Clare's, I believe the Dark Artifice series is like 
a little bit based off Great Expectations and for whatever reason I was like I'm gonna read Great Expectations and then I, I just haven't yet. So I've read Christmas Carol and Other Holiday Treasures by Charles Dickens and I've read Peter Pan as well. So starting into the nonfiction I have A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt uh, which is a memoir about him and his queerness and his experiences with his like indigenous queer body. I got this just in November as a birthday present for my friends and I have not read it yet. She Wants It by Jill Soloway, Desire, Power, and Toppling the Patriarchy. I've had this for quite some time. Obviously it's about like misogyny and toppling the patriarchy. Um, so I've just kind of kept it but I don't know too much about it. I've got this round by Mamrie Hart. I read her first book and I really enjoyed it. This one I have not read yet. <laughs> the Princess Diaries by Carrie Fisher, which I have read. I love Star Wars. I love Carrie Fisher. I miss her dearly. This is actually not on my TBR. I started reading it, but I've never finished it. But basically it's like a science book about like the power of music on your brain. And eventually one day I will read it, but it's not really on my TBR because it's not, I don't know. It's just not something that I see myself reading soon, but it's something that I do want to read. Then I have Dear Ijewele by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, which I've read, and I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shraya, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, which I've read as well. Next I have a couple arcs. I have Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott, which is indigeneity in Canada. I can't, I don't remember. But I have an arc of it and I haven't read it. I have Heartberries by Theresa May Malcott, uh, which is a memoir about her life and her trauma and um, her like unfolding her trauma with her therapist, basically. I've read that. I have They Said This Would Be Fun by Eternity Artis. Um, and this I've read Conversations with Canadians by Lee Miracle, which I have not read. It's about Lee Miracle, who is a Indigenous writer and her like lifelong conversations with Canadians about Indigenous people in Canada. All Our Relations by Tanya Talaga, which I have not read and I know is about, oh, this is about um, youth suicide rates of Indigenous uh, youth in Canada. I have The Fire This Time by Jasmine Ward, which is short um, pieces about race in America, I believe. I have a few um, true crime books. I have The Missing Millionaire by Katie Dobbs. This is an arc. I, it's about a missing millionaire in Toronto. I have Overdose by Benjamin Perrin, which is also an arc, and this is about the opioid crisis in Canada. Red River Girl by Joanna Jolly, uh, which I've read, unlike the other two. <laughs> I have Elements of Style, which I reference sometimes when I'm writing. This is like a used copy that I found, and it's kind of fun because it also has like little notes in it, which I think is really fun. A copy of The Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft, who we stan. She gave birth to Mary Shelley, who is... Um, our favorite gothic woman. I have One Day We'll All Be Dead and None of This Will Matter by Scotchy Cole. This I have read. I've also read Why I'm No L Longer Talking to White People About Race by Renny Edo Lodge, The Spout Race in Britain, and I highly recommend this one. This one is really fantastic. If Hunger by Roxane Gay, which I've read and absolutely loved. I actually read this back in 2020. I have The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which I've had I think I've had this as long as I've had um, How to Be Both by Ali Smith. I've had it for a long time. Um, and I do, this actually, I made a point to make like a list of backlist TBR stuff that I want to read in 2021. And this is on that list. Police and Black Lives by Robin Maynard. I haven't read this yet, which I'm ashamed to say because I've had it for quite some time. Um, but this is something I really want to get to soon because it's about race in Canada. I feel like a lot of books that go around are obviously about the states um and I don't I don't know a lot about Canada's like slavery history and that kind of stuff so um I really want to get to this I have Angela Y Davis Women Cl Race and Class I have not read this yet I have uh Robin Wall Kimmerer's Breeding Sweetgrass which I also haven't read yet which is about um like indigenous gathering and community and stuff like that. And then I have The Financial Diet by Chelsea Fagan. Um, and this is based off of like a YouTube series that was started, I believe, by Hank Green, just about like 
finances for millennials. I liked the YouTube channel so I bought the book and I just hadn't read it yet. So I'm gonna stop it there for today. I'm gonna film this video in parts because obviously this video is already pretty long. Eventually I do want to get through all of this. I still have two shelves left on this bookshelf. Then we'll move on to this big boy. Um, which again, actually the second bookshelf, quite a few books out there that I've read. So I feel like this is the worst of it because it's a lot of like literary stuff, which I'm not always in the mood for. Like I have to really be in the mood to pick up a book like this that's so heavy and dense and doesn't have like a shit ton of plot. <laughs> My other two bookshelves are basically all sci-fi fantasy. So obviously those I'm a little bit more inclined to read before I read stuff on the shelf. I'm not like on a goal or anything to read through a lot of my TBR pile. However, one of my like book goals this year is to more quickly read the recent stuff that I'm picking up so that it's not sitting on a shelf for literally five years. That's where I'm at with that. I keep talking with my hands. This is why I sit in a chair during my videos because I'm like... I'm all over the place. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you next time for part two. Um, this will probably take, I'm going to say two or three more parts. Yeah, that's it. Wear a mask, wash your hands, Black Lives Matter. Bye.